Montana is known for its crystal clear lakes, its trout-filled rivers, an abundant variety of wildlife, and vast green mountain ranges covered in healthy forests. Approximately six million acres, or one-third of Montana's forests, are privately owned. Of that private forest ownership, 3.8 million acres are owned by private individuals, families, or organizations not affiliated with a wood processing facility. These are collectively known as non-industrial private forests, or preferably family forests. In addition to providing a sustainable source of wood fiber, Montana's family forests are also important sources of clean water, wildlife habitat, and recreational opportunities. Montana's family forest owners display a strong commitment to forest stewardship, meaning that they work hard to manage their woods in a way that protects the multiple resources and values that they hold dear, not only for themselves, but for future generations. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the sustainable timber harvests planned and executed on family forest lands around Montana. In addition to generating income, timber harvests can also be an important tool in enhancing wildlife habitat, preventing forest insects and disease infestation, improving viewshed and recreation opportunities, and reducing wildfire danger. The goal of this production is to showcase real-life sustainable harvests on family forest lands, designed to help landowners visualize and implement a plan for harvest activities to accomplish their forest stewardship goals. I've had this place for 40 years, and I've walked it probably every day that I have been here. Here were all of these exquisite Douglas fir trees that were like 300 years old or 200 years old and were only this big because they were so tight in there. You know, and as I worked with the forester that came up here realizing it really needed to be harvested. It needed to be opened up so that the trees could grow and be healthy. I had thought about harvesting for many years and I was afraid. And so finally I decided really a lot because of the fires. And I realized how dangerous my land was and uh, that knowing to get some of that dead stuff out of there and really get it healthy again was really important. But that was the turning point, you know, the fires and, and realizing how beautiful it could be after a harvest. Now that I've completed the harvesting, uh, I love it. I know that probably in my lifetime, I'm 72, that um, it'll be in a couple, maybe 10, 20 years where I'll really see it be mature and, and glorious. But for my daughter and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, it's going to be a beautiful place. In some cases, landowners may be deterred from pursuing management activities because they are not sure how to go about the process. Luckily, many resources are available to assist these landowners. Consulting foresters can help landowners inventory their forest resources and assess the economic costs and benefits of a particular activity. They can also help lay out or prescribe management activities that help achieve the landowner's goals. There are many cases in which forest stewardship activities are not a money-making venture. Sometimes landowners who desire to enhance the overall quality of their woods need to invest some of their own financial resources. Luckily, several state and federal agencies offer cost share and grant opportunities to offset the cost of certain stewardship activities. In looking back at what goals I had established for this project, I, I had safety and beauty and usefulness of the forest and and without the DNRC's Forest and Focus grant I could not have accomplished this. This was not something I could afford as a homeowner, a small landowner to do on my own. So without the Forest and Focus grant and without it being explained to me this this all my goals could not have been achieved. Landowners who are interested in receiving forestry assistance or basically even just knowing more about their property should definitely contact the state of Montana. 
Our Department of Natural Resources and Conservation employs 16 service foresters around the state and the job of those service foresters is to go to private lands and help landowners understand what does sustainable forestry look like. We treat them as a one-stop shop, so we want them to be able to tell landowners about different cost share programs that are available to them or different uh, workshop opportunities that they can take advantage of. Conducting a timber harvest can be easier with the help of a forester. A forester will keep your goals objectives as the number one priority throughout the forest harvest process. Different landowners often have different goals for their forest. A forester's initial action will be to take a walk through the property with you, the landowner. They will evaluate the health of your forest and share examples of characteristics your forest may have, such as tree species diversity, vigor, and spacing, as well as any evidence of insects or disease. After the walkthrough has been completed, and if your goals are compatible with your forest, the forester will then present a project proposal. This includes a harvest map, a summary of forest health and conditions, a harvest prescription that addresses specific landowner goals, an estimate of the volume of trees to be removed to accomplish those goals, a general logging plan, including how the slash will be treated, and any additional stewardship work to complete. Once the landowner is happy with the proposed management plan, the forester will also help with finding qualified contractors to hire and complete the work. In Montana, we have highly qualified loggers who are accredited through the Montana Logging Association. A final piece of advice that I offer to landowners who are thinking about doing their first harvest is that sometimes it takes time to develop a plan and then execute the plan. Simple actions by forest stewards can lead to substantial positive impacts. Now that you understand a bit more about how to plan for achieving your forest stewardship goals through timber harvest, your next question might be, who do I get to do the work? Uh, I started logging in 1976. I was fortunate enough, I knew that things were changing, and I was fortunate enough to be in the very first accredited logging professional class in Yellow Bay in 1994. So now for 22 years, I have been a accredited professional. You gotta have it, you gotta have it in your heart that you wanna do the right thing for the forest and for Montana and truly care. If a landowner uh, is looking for an answer to a question about a contractor, one of the first things that comes to my mind is, look at longevity. Has the guy been around or did he just start this summer? Is he accredited? What's his safety record? What does his machinery look like? Does his machinery look like it's in good rig or do you see oil running out? If you ask him for a tour of his job, look at those things and, and maybe you'll see something. Do the men look like they're acting safe? Do they get out with their hard hat on out of their machines? Those are all things that would give a landowner a good, quick uh, idea what he's looking for. Contact a service forester, a DNRC service forester. Uh, our sawmills have uh, foresters. And then the Montana Logging Association would be a great resource also. And they also have a list of accredited logging professionals. And I think those should all be, give you good results. What I would tell others considering a harvest is to think about what their priorities are on the land. Are they living in an unhealthy forest, a dangerous forest, one that could promote you know, forest fires or, or forest fuel at least? So I would tell others, research, contact um, our wonderful lumber companies here in the valley, uh, the DNRC for sure. Uh, also attend any of the programs that the DNRC promotes. Uh, I would have been doing this a lot sooner had I been more attentive to that. So I think the biggest thing to, to reach my goals for my forest was when I found out about the stewardship program and uh, the, the classroom opportunities that it offered me and uh, helped educate me a little further with information that I maybe didn't already know. And so with the stewardship program, I, it made me feel more comfortable about what I wanted to do with my forest and areas I wanted to manage in my forest. After talking to the DNRC, uh, they brought to light uh, the opportunity to help me with my fire reduction on my property through the Stewardship and Hazardous Fuels Reduction Program. And by doing so, we were able to uh, uh, do more on the property uh, with less cost to me than I would have had otherwise. 
don't put it off, do it. There's grant money to help us reduce our forest fuels and to harvest our, our timber. And, and I would say, don't be afraid like I was. Um, someone will hold your hand and walk you through it, explain the machinery, explain the before and the after, and be there for you, a phone call away. I would tell other people that were considering a harvest to go for it. The forest is gonna be healthier and it's going to be uh, a more aesthetically pleasing piece of property. Your forest is a dynamic, ever-changing, living community that requires care and maintenance over time. As you have seen in this video, even a forest landowner with no professional forestry experience can execute a successful timber harvest in order to achieve his or her forest stewardship goals. Montana's forest owners have a responsibility to both be a good steward to their land and good neighbors within their communities. We hope that this production has helped you to feel more capable to do just that.